Welcome to today's episode of Different Thinking for Different Times, and I'm Steve Lentini. I'm your host. Today I'll be reading from my workbook that I developed with Paul Scolio of Beverly, Mass., called Wake Up, Jump Into Your Life. And I hope you don't mind me reading from it, but I'll also ad-lib and add my thoughts as I'm working on it right now as a book. So look for the book come January, and you can pre-order it by emailing me, steve at stevelentini.com. Steve at stevelentini.com. So I'll begin. To really advance oneself and truly receive insight as to one's power to to create in this life, a journey of self-observation is necessary. Step one. It's step one in the process. First, you have to be able to look at yourself, to be able to see oneself in each and every situation, and to learn and listen how you feel in each and every moment in your life is beginning to wake up. So I myself have been working on waking up for about 30 years since I met uh, someone named George Ivanovich Gurdjieff. And Gurdjieff used to say that most men are in a bourgeoisie sleeping man's state and that it takes a force of will to wake oneself up in one's lifetime. And what he meant by that is how to lucidly create your life like you can jump into a dream, lucid dreaming. So as we begin this marvelous path to awakening, right? Hopefully you'll consider this, right? I want you to test this for yourself. As we begin this marvelous path to awakening, awakening to the magic that each and every moment of our lives is, right? Awakening to the miracles all around us in every choice. Awakening to the miracles that living in a galaxy opens to us. Awakening to the messages in nature that if one is paying attention, all that's required to have a life of fulfillment And satisfaction is here, beyond what was ever imagined. Yes, it's all a miracle, right? We live in a miracle, and it begins with a choice. Everything in this existence is first a choice or a thought. Your choices and thoughts create your reality. So it's the thoughts that you act on. Recognizing and taking responsibility for what you've created with your choices is step two in the process of waking up. So that's accepting responsibility for what you've created to this point and looking at each and every moment as a gift, a lesson. What is it here to teach you or what is it trying to show you? How is it trying to wake you up, maybe even jar you? It might be a tragedy or something you never pictured for yourself, a divorce or a bankruptcy or an idea that you thought was going to be a home run and it didn't get off the ground. And now You're in the process of licking your wounds. So how do you begin to develop a level of thinking above your thinking, as I've talked about before, and to create different thinking for different times? And one of the ways is to record and journal your thoughts and what's going on in your life, always in the inquiry, asking the question, what is this about? What's the gift in it? What's it here to teach me? So by recording what comes after each of our choices, right? If we're journaling, we can soon see a pattern, what I call default patterns. Default patterns are the ones we fall back to automatically while we're asleep, right? If we're going to wake up, wake up, jump into our lives, we have to recognize that we too are asleep as well. We don't, We do not even realize that we're making choices based on old programs that keep us stuck. The same results keep appearing, and we expect something different. As Einstein said, that's the definition of insanity, right? Keep doing what you're doing and expect a different result. So frustration becomes the norm. Frustration rules. Journaling the feelings that you feel when your default patterns appear and the feelings you get when you make new choices is critical. Because through this process, you can discover the power to create a new future in any moment. You have to recognize the old patterns. What are your automatic choices? Kind of like your computer selects the default printer. There's also 
a program running your program, right? So fascinating how computers have Windows 10 running all the different programs that you can click on and select. Fascinating, right? It was created by programmers who themselves and all of us have the program running us, the stories we tell ourselves, the hurts we feel, the apparent hurts, or the the story we have about parents or a mother or a father, or we weren't a favorite, or the stories we have about work and a boss or a spouse and a mate or a, a relationship, a girlfriend or a boyfriend where the relationship went wrong. Those are stories that we tell ourselves that keep us from succeeding. And those are the default patterns. And that's the program running the program, the stories you always tell yourself. So Alfred Adler worked with Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. And while they were studying the effects of childhood and how we were raised affecting our future, Alfred Adler split with them. Because he thought in his work that people were setting things up to be the way they were, meaning that if you decided you couldn't go out in life, that you'd had too much failure and you couldn't get a job and you, you, uh, you couldn't have a relationship, you were setting it up so that all those things failed so that you could say to everybody, see, every time I go out, it fails, that you were setting it up to stay inside. And so that's what I'm asking all of us to do is to look at Whatever's showing up in your life, did you set it up? Are you setting it up that way? Can you look at making new choices, ones that are really uncomfortable, to break you out of the story of, I can't succeed. I could never write a book. I could never do a podcast. I could never, whatever follows, I could never. Or that's not me. Whatever follows, well, that's not me. I can't do that. Those typically are default patterns. Now, if you said to me, um, I want to be Michael Jordan, and you're unable to dunk a basketball, and you're not really that good at it, it also has to match your skills and talents. But typically, our frustrations are more, they more revolve around the little things, the relationships, the work the frustrations we feel because we didn't succeed at something and we give up instead of trying again. And maybe are you setting it up that way so that you could say, see, this didn't work. I knew it wouldn't work. Or because everyone told me it didn't work, see, it didn't work. Maybe you're setting it up that way. Just question it. So if the same results keep appearing while you expect something different, That's the indicator that you're stuck, that you need to wake up. And it takes a force of will to wake up from those patterns. Typically, too, to help us wake up, we need a group of people around us who are on the same path that are investigating self-awareness and waking up to create the love, the life that they want, and the love, too. What you need is people who can look at you and say, hey, do you see what you're doing? you see the pattern you're creating that they can lovingly share with you the places that you keep falling into the old patterns, the default patterns. They can help expose the program that runs the program. I call it a safe group, right? Others who in exchange for your sharing, how they show up. So you have to be willing to hold others accountable. They agree to shine the light on what you do and how you show up for them. And when they see your default patterns, they point it out. Most times, it's not what we expect to hear. That's the other thing that we can be stung by it. I write in the book, it's like a deer jumping onto the highway, into the path of our car, traveling at 70 miles an hour. Boom. Waking up and having others point out our default patterns and our the places that we keep falling into and expecting something new, it makes us sound like a crash onto our consciousness, like that deer jumping into the path of the car. And we're left dented and banged up for a while after we learn it. But as we participate in the group exercises and we continue to do the work on ourselves, waking up 
and understanding we're creating our reality, we notice our ability to change. And we also notice our resistance to this process because the brain wants you to stay comfortable. The acorn brain wants you to stay comfortable. And different thinking for different times is to embrace the discomfort instead of expecting to get through life unscathed we embrace challenges and discomfort because we know it's life itself knocking on our door it's life itself knocking saying you got to grow and you need totally different thinking for different times in order to have a different world for yourself because you're the only one that you can change We see all kinds of people railing against and protesting against others who think differently than them when their job really is to only change themselves. And as we each address each other, right? So, I mean, as we each address our own places that we have to heal and that we have to change, now the world will begin to change because I can't change you. I can only change me. So observing what we're resistant to, learning over time that it's the very things that we resist that we must do in order to have a future unlike the past. So I'll continue where I left off next week, and I want you to think about it. Don't do what I say. Instead, begin to practice for yourself. Begin to ponder creating the life of your dreams and to look at all your frustrations and challenges and discomfort as gifts. And what are the lessons that they're trying to point out to you? What is it that you need to change because you're frustrated with someone else when really they might be showing you through their actions, parts of you that you have yet to embrace. So think about that. What is it that others who bug you are trying to wake you up to? What are they trying to show you about you? Because otherwise, they wouldn't bother you. Have a great week. Remember, choose different thinking for different times, and you'll make a difference in the world.